Hey gang, hope you're all doing well. Hope you're having a good week. So I want to talk a little bit about this lockout, okay? And obviously it's at a frustrating point. And, uh, but I want to go into, you know, three things. If you could implement three things, let's say you were Major League Baseball Commissioner and you could executive order three things to make the game better and you don't need votes from the union or the owners or whatever, blah, 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 what would they be? Um, I had a great talk uh, the other day with Dan Rourke, who has the uh, who runs a great baseball channel called Yankees Admin. It's one of the best Yankees channels out there uh, on YouTube. So go check it out. I have his uh, one of his latest videos linked in the description down below. I also talked with Derek Lewandowski over at NYY Recaps about this as well, and that we had an interesting, which is another fantastic discussion about this type of stuff too, because diff getting different perspectives and you know uh, from I mean, Yankee fans and Yankees content creators kind of. You know, kind of gives me a different perspective on, on the game and whatnot, and it teaches me stuff about what other people know. So I wanted to share, you know, three things that I would implement, and I want to know what you think. So give me your feedback in the comments down below. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, you like stuff like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you don't miss stuff, especially when this lockout ends at some point. So because um, there's going to be a lot of breaking news, and I'm going to give it to you all. So anyway, with that, so Major League Baseball owners have. have talked about instituting a salary floor, okay, and like a minimum payroll floor. And they mentioned the number $100 million. Now, um, you know, some teams are in 30, 40, 50, 60 million. So there, there's several you know, tens of millions of dollars away. So it's going to be really difficult to just have that hard floor implemented immediately. So, you know, the, what I was thinking of uh, gradually increasing it by maybe $10 million per year until they get – to the $100 million to let teams, you know, gradually get themselves to the point where they can maintain a minimum of a $100 million payroll, okay, a sustainable payroll. And the fact is these wealthy owners can do this. There are teams, you know, I mean, I know it may be hard for some teams, but it's doable if they do it right, especially if they're beneficiaries of revenue sharing from large market teams. And that's another thing I wanted to share because that's the other, one of the other components here of um, what I want to talk about. So the, the increase in the gradual a gradual increase in the floor in terms of the payroll floor is doable, but I think the number two component, which is my number two, is making it mandatory for small market teams to utilize the money they get from large market teams and revenue sharing and making it mandatory for them to utilize this towards payroll. Because right now they can just pocket the money and don't have to do anything with it. So teams like the Yankees can just give tons of money away every year in revenue sharings, and the teams can just pocket it, which is complete baloney to me. Okay? And... <clears throat> So making them make requiring these teams to utilize it will help them get to this gradual tiered payroll floor. Okay, it would make it easier for them. All right, and, and the fact is, investing in your product, these these billionaire uber billionaire owners, there's no way they can't have a minimum floor of eventually 100 million dollars with, with, with the you know with the product they put out. And if not, they shouldn't be running a team. To be honest with you, like, and utilizing free money towards making the team better. I mean. What's better business than that? I don't think I don't think pocketing money is better business because that's not business. That's just pocketing the money. So those are my two, okay? Gradual increase of the floor because that's something that they're actually talking about themselves. And I'm just providing, I think, a, uh, an easier path to them accomplishing it and requiring teams and the small market teams. And I don't know if you know one side will agree on this or not, but to me, again, this creates a clearer path for the floor to happen. And it also you know, helps protect... Um, teams from, you know, intentionally tanking, okay, and that's the with teams like the Orioles or whoever or the Tampa Bay Rays when they intentionally tank for a bunch of years, they should not be the beneficiary of these high picks if they're intentionally tanking. So they should be required to use this money towards making the team better, make it more competitive, okay? And it leads me to my third and most controversial proposal, um, which is a team opt-out. Okay, I talked to Dan about this. I also talked to Derek about this. And I have to credit Derek because he helped me get to the final end of it. But I want to give you the start. I initially suggested a team opt out, meaning I think teams should be able to opt out of these contracts. Like if a player signs a 10 year contract uh, and they get an opt out after four years to go get a, another bigger contract or whatever, that could also screw a team or whatever. Uh, a team opt out. So let's say a team once every five years or something, if it signs somebody to a big deal, let's just say they sign a player to a 10 year deal, they should have the ability to opt out of that contract after five years, wipe that money off their payroll, okay? I initially had the opt-out just being an absolute, op an absolute opt-out, but I don't think the players union would ever agree to that anyway because they want to make sure that players are paid under any circumstances. So Derek actually enhanced it, and I give him a lot of credit for this because I think it was a fantastic idea. 
um, of having the team still being able to opt out, but the players still being paid, but that money that was obligated uh, in terms of payroll is wiped off the payroll. So let's, I'm using Jacoby Ellsbury as an example where he was hurt pretty much the last four years of his contract. Jacoby would still get paid and probably through insurance if he's hurt or whatever it is, right? Um, or actually it won't, be, it won't be through insurance anymore if he opts out of the contract, so if the team opts out of the contract. But he would still get paid from the team, but that $23 million that they were – that was uh, – Attached to their or attached to their payroll expenditures would be white would be reduced by the twenty three million. So if they were over the threshold, we'll put them under the threshold. Okay, wiping that money out. So the player would still get paid, but the team's payroll obligation would go back down. And that's the, that's the comp uh, component to this that Derek added. And I think it's a fantastic idea. So I give you a lot of credit for that, bro. And thank you for adding that feedback. So, um, but let me know what you think. Okay, these are three. To me, very reasonable proposals. I know the team opt out would be a little controversial, but if, the, if if you're making sure that the players are being paid, okay, and I'm all for protecting the players, but I'm also want to create scenarios where you're protecting the team too. And it's not like I think you know I don't think the owners are tone deaf and stuff like that, but at the same at the same you know point, something like that should not hamstring a team from doing what it needs to do if this player is not living up to his end of the bargain, okay. And it's just like any other job. If you're not living up to the bargain, teams get the ability to fire you. Well, they don't have the ability to do that in Major League Baseball with the players. You're, they're heavily protected. But there needs to be a scenario where a team's protected, and this is a way to do it, I think, in my opinion. So you let me know what you think of these three proposals. What proposals do you have? I know there's a ton. We obviously want these sides to come to a compromise at some point, okay, let cooler minds prevail. But these are three things that if I were – um, given the ability to executive order stuff as commissioner without needing any votes, these are things I would institute. Okay, and there's some other things too, but these are things I would institute that I think it would benefit both sides. So let me know what you think. Give me your feedback, and I'll talk to you next time.